Hey everyone, Nick Walsh from LiveX here, and today we are unboxing the ATEM camera control panel. Now, ever since they announced this, we've been super excited to get our hands on this and have a hardware solution for controlling the color on our Ursas and Micro Studios. So, let's take it out. Now, they announced this uh, with their fiber options. Um, so, I'm really glad that we'll be able to take this on the road with us and make it work in case we upgrade everything to the fiber backs. So, opening the box, first thing you get here, this awesome Fusion 9 free download pamphlet. Learn all about their motion graphics. Don't need that for right now, check that out later. And here is the software and manual, all of this information you could find out online at blackmagicdesign.com support. So, I don't need that right now. So now let's take out the styrofoam. Yes, look at that. I'm really digging the design of all of their new products. The like black matte finish on everything, I think is really classy. So I'm gonna get rid of this box. So as you can see, there are four separate panels and those could each be assigned to different cameras. And what's great about it is you're not locked into which camera you're using on each panel. Up on the top here is where you can select which camera you use. So if you're on a 4ME, for example, you have 20 inputs, you could just select whichever input you'd like, and that's uh, the camera you'll have control over as long as um, you have an SDI send and an SDI receive. Over here is also how you will set up the network. And yes, yeah, speaking of which, uh, let's look at the I.O. on the back. So over here are a few different power options. On the right is an IEC cable. Uh, in the middle is an XLR4 pin. And then I believe the Ethernet will allow you to have PoE. So then that way you don't even need to run any additional power to it. You'll notice here there are two Ethernet ports here. So what you could actually do is loop it out to a computer or loop it out to a 1ME advanced panel or something. And that way you just have one cable connecting everything instead of a whole network setup. You could uh, really, really uh, lower your footprint when you're setting up um, the switcher and the panel and everything. Also, over here is a USB-C cable for firmware updates. And please note that there's no IEC or USB-C cable supplied, so you'll need to provide your own to update the firmware and to turn it on. So, now let's check out the front again. So, there are four different slots over here. I'm gonna look over here at the top half. This has the different scene files you could use, so that way you could set up a look, hit store, and then a number, and remember it. So especially if you're moving environments in a production, you could always recall a scene pretty quickly without having to change every individual setting. Over here, you could also change the ND filter on the camera, change your master gain level. You could even control white balance, set up an auto white balance, send out bars over the camera, and you could change the shutter speed or shutter angle on the camera. Moving on down, you could control color in the whites and the black slash flare. I'm not sure what this knob does, because it's not powered on right now, so all the LED lights and stuff I can't see. But it's interesting because the software on ATEM has a lift gamma gain, kind of like DaVinci wheels, um, set up for that. But this just has a traditional RCP layout. So I'd be interested if you can do everything you need to on this, or if you kind of need to bounce back and forth, because I know the software will let you control saturation, and I'm not sure how to do that over here. So I think you probably won't be able to get rid of your software completely, but this is a really great hardware addition to this. So like maybe you just use this for iris and black level or something, and you could get really fine detail in ATEM control. So moving on down, camera grid here, I don't know if you can see this matrix of a bunch of dots. That will line up with what camera you are selected on, and it'll be green if it's not in program and red if it is in program. So that way you could keep an eye on that while you're changing the colors of everything, and if you need to do a hot move, you'll know if that camera is hot. Down on the left is the iris level. So that's gonna be controlled by this knob over here. It's probably hard to see in the shot, but there are lines here marking us where the knob ends up so you could you know, remember exactly what line you go to every time. And on the knob itself, it is a really, really smooth knob. And then I could press down on it to select the camera if you're using the aux output. So here's how this works. Um, with the ATEM, you can set up an auxiliary output to be for whoever shading cameras. So that way you could just press on each of these um, and preview that camera full. So I would imagine you'd have that, a program monitor and a multi-view, um, and that way you could check out some details if you have a monitor routed to um, 
the, the switcher, which I think is really great because right now you have to get a Blackmagic router and you need to get the smart view panel and install that in a rack somewhere and set that whole thing up. But this looks pretty simple if you just run an auxiliary and this will just switch whatever that aux is in. So here's where you will control the iris and on the side is how you control the master black level. This is something that you could accidentally brush up against and to avoid doing that, there are a couple things you could do. One are activity buttons. There's one for the entire panel itself and then one for iris and master black. So if you step away from it, you could deactivate it and then that way if you brush by it or if anyone else touches it or like wants to mess with it, you, you're not at risk of that. Another thing we found in other RCPs that are over ethernet is that the iris control is very, very segmented. So you actually see every step it changes the iris. It doesn't smoothly transition on the iris. So I imagine this sensitivity knob will control that. You can make it so you can step from like 5.4 to 4.9 or whatever, or you can get those micro half stops in between things, uh, which I think is what separates the new software RCPs versus the hardware ones, is the hardware ones you do a complete sensitive control over. So I would hope that this would be similar to the ones that you'd find at uh, other broadcast studios today. Over here on the left will also let you know your master black level, and then this preview button will do the same thing as the pressing the knob. Now just feeling it around and moving it, I wonder, like every time I'm grabbing it, I could feel it kind of move down. So I wonder if it's easy to accidentally change what's in preview as you move it around. Uh, but luckily that's not a super priority, uh, and you're not gonna mess up the show by doing that. Finally, over here is close and open on the coarseness of the iris. What that'll do is you could find the peak of the iris and then set that as the max. So then that way you're not worried about accidentally overexposing it. So you can limit yourself that way. There is the iris and master black activity level we talked about before. Then you could just enable auto iris. Uh, so that'll just talk but just go to the normal auto setting on the Ursas or the Micro Studios. And then there's a call button. I'm not sure how the microphone situation would work. I'd imagine you'd have to be plugged into the switcher on the call, but this will enable you to have direct access to that camera, which is really great in case you need to communicate with the person operating that camera at any time. That's something that we don't really use that often, and I wish we did, um, with the because that you could just put your whole workflow over one SDI line. So I think that's really, really great. So there you have it, the ATEM camera control panel. If you want more unboxing videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.